Hey folks, it's Fridcar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Boulder Canyon here in Farming Simulator 19. I am just going to customize my tractor over here. I want the front hydraulic on this one. Customize, yes. Right. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. Um, I've always got the hiccups. I don't know why. I frequent, well, not always. I, I frequently do. Probably because I talk a lot. Anyway, that doesn't really matter. Uh, no, what we're doing today is we're going to do some more mowing. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is get that mower right there onto the back of the tractor. And then the other mower onto the front of the tractor. And then we can make a start. Uh, we will be wanting to upgrade our mowers at some point. Not quite sure when we're going to do that, but that's definitely on the cards. Although the first thing that we will be doing is buying a new tractor. That's going to be the next task that we actually do. Uh, let me just do that. So we've got our mowers ready to roll. Um, yeah, that's going to be the first sort of next big thing that we get is another tractor so that we can run these things a little bit more efficiently I think and I think it will help as well having a bigger tractor being able to work on the uh, doing the timber is definitely going to be a step in the right direction it's going to really help us I think but right now what we want to do is we want to get going with our mowing now it does struggle a little bit on this hill right here our tractor does but for the most part going around this field there isn't any point that the tractor struggles with other than that one tiny little bit of slope right there that we just struggled with um the whole of the rest of the field it does absolutely fine because it's pretty much level once we start moving up that hill and we make another field going up that hill it's going to be a lot different it's going to be because it's so much more steep it's going to make it much more of a challenge for whatever tractor is moving up and down the hill and this one i don't think is going to be very well suited especially as i'd like to have a bigger mower by that point um i mean ideally by that point we will have a combine and we will be planting some crops so we'll probably keep this one down here as grass and we will do crops going up and down that hill there so that we can start working towards some of the other targets that we've got in this series one of which is going to be getting all of those animals and we can't get animals until we have crops ready to feed them and provide bedding for them and and all the, the the important things that they need like that so yeah we're gonna need to be looking at a combine which after we've gone and bought our tractor and probably changed the uh timber runner that we've got so that we, we will take the one that we've got back and we will upgrade and uh we'll change to another one possibly the 15 meter one rather than 12 meter one so that we can run seven meter logs on the timber runner i think that would work quite nicely because trying to put seven meter logs onto a 12 meter timber runner is not quite going to fit um so if we're able to do that it's going to make us a decent bit of cash and uh, well see running the seven meter logs i don't think you get more per meter as such but uh, by running seven meter logs it means that we will be able to transport more timber in every single load so obviously you know, the seven meter logs as opposed to the six meter logs it's going to result in just slightly more timber for every single load that we do and that's going to result in more money for every single load that we do now if we're loading the trailer properly this tractor here is not going to be able to pull it that much we do know from past experience this one struggles to pull the trailer as it is so definitely the first thing on the cards is upgrading the tractor once we've done that then we can see about upgrading the uh, timber runner the trailer and honestly upgrading that one is going to be much the same i know i've left the mowers down on the ground i'm uh, uh, I'm, I'm happy with that i'm I'm, com I'm comfortable with doing that little bit um once we've upgraded the tractor then we can upgrade the timber runner and honestly the upgrading of the timber runner it's not uh, a big deal it's, it's not going to take very much to do that 
uh, which means that we're then looking at um, what do we buy next and I'm sort of thinking the only there's a couple things that we would want for being able to do crops one we're going to want lime and we're going to want to be able to spread lime um, now if we get a, a placeable lime station back here like we've done with the other things uh, yeah that's that would work we could do that but um, it's quite expensive to get a lime so the lime station the placeable for lime is like 30 grand I think I don't think there is a cheaper option um, so it might be better if we were to go for a um, like ferry line back and forth from the dealership if we got a trailer load of the stuff and brought it back we're not going to need to worry about it for quite a while after that and it would give us an excuse to use our X lifter thing that we've got back there and I mean yeah I know that we've got the the pallet forks and stuff but the the X lifter could be fun however um, if we were to get the bags that go with that X lifter we'd have to take that to the dealership and slowly load the trailers because you can't auto load those bags straight onto the trailers even the auto load trailers so the sort of pros and cons of both of them I'm thinking that just having pallets would be good and we could use the X lifter for loading the um, pallets into the um, lime spreader anyway I, I think that would work I don't think that there would be a problem with doing that and it would sort of it would give us a, a reason to be using the X lifter at least a little bit I know we haven't used it very much we used it a bit for timber and we haven't really done very much else with it um, we could sell it but it's honestly it's only worth a very small amount of money so we're not going to get very much back with it it's not going to make any real difference to what we do at this stage because of the sheer vast quantities of money that we're able to get from harvesting trees and we do have a huge number of trees left on our own patch of land at the moment anyway we've still got a lot to do there um, so then we're sort of looking at what else could we do um, or what else are we going to need one of the things we're going to need is a sprayer and we're going to need a source of herbicide as well I was thinking most likely for the herbicide we will do exactly what we've done with the seed and fertilizer tanks over there we will get the equivalent for the herbicide there is one for herbicide and there's one for liquid fertilizer as well I have no interest really in using liquid fertilizer when we've got the solid fertilizer and then once we get cows or pigs we will have a source of manure as well and slurry that we'll be able to put onto the fields so we'll be covered for that and I don't think we need to worry about doing liquid fertilizer which means that whatever sprayer we get can just be used for doing weed control and that'll be a it's, it's a nice simple thing for it to take care of let's actually lift the mower for once shall we there we go we lift both the mowers as we go around there and I'll go over to the side and then we're gonna go a couple times around the rock and then we'll leave the hired help working up and down the field I think I think just twice round should be enough it's it's enough room for it everything to sort of turn on the headlands and stuff like that um, I might manually do everything at this end before I do anything else just to tidy everything up here a little bit if I run a straight line across there or straight-ish line that'll probably help us just a little bit and then I can run uh, well it, I won't be going a straight line right the way over to the um, to the other side in, from here let's lift those up there that bit will sort of stay where it is I need to now go straight up towards the rock and take that bit out so I want to go over here and get somewhere in here roughly and then we can sort of work it out from this point so I'll, I'll drop it down here and we'll just go and fill in this piece here and then I can go around the rock I'll probably do it three times around just so that we make sure that we do actually cut all of the grass all the way around it because that's what usually happens it doesn't quite cut it properly and then the only time consuming bit really for doing all of this job is um, doing the baling 
I mean, it's not too bad with our faster baler, uh, but it's still a fairly time-consuming job. It's one that we've got to sit and do ourselves. That's why I like having the hired help. It's because the hired help is able to help us out. It's able to go and do these jobs for us, which means that we don't have to spend loads and loads of time actually doing them. I'll take that out a little bit over to there, and then we go straight up and do another pass up through here. And then I'll do the same down the other side. And I'll go a third time round as well. That should hopefully be enough space to turn round because obviously here the stone limits where it can go. Whereas up the other end of the field it can drive off the edge. It can go right out onto the road in order to do its turning around. So I bring that to there. I'll bring you out a little bit like that, just one mower's width, so that it doesn't cause any issues anywhere. It should go and do everything that it's supposed to do. There we go. And then the same up here. Once I've done, once this one gets going, I'm going to go back onto the scorpion. And we're going to go and cut a few more trees down with that one, so that we've got a nice big pile of timber on the floor. We won't sell any timber until we have done all of our bales. Uh, one thing I do need to do now, because I've started mowing, is slow time down to one time speed. I normally would keep it on five, obviously, uh, but we'll keep that on one time speed now. And what is the current price of silage? 285, it's just started dropping. It was about 287, I think, earlier on in this uh, earlier on this week. So we've either got to keep it for at least a full day-night cycle, uh, or we sell it at 285, which is above a thousand. Well, it's above two thousand dollars per bale for the bales that we have, uh, the eight thousand liter bales. Uh, remember, those are double-sized bales, though. Um, so. 285 anything above 250 because we've got it on hard mode for prices i usually i'm happy i know that it does go above 300 but i'm actually happy with anything above 350 uh, 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 anything above 250 if it goes above 250 i would say that that would be wait is that the right angle actually yeah it is isn't it it's more of an angle than i thought it would be I'm all the way over there Oh, I'll run that bit out through. Oh, that's just because I rolled forward a little bit, so it's got that bit. I'll run this all the way up to here on a straight line using the hired help, and then I will mow out that little slice right there so that we don't have to come back and do it at the end. And take you out as well. Right. Switch those over like that. And then we will go... Actually, we're going to go right out round... And we'll take it, we'll run down here, we'll do out this sort of triangle piece. We'll come up through there. And start running it around here like this. That should work quite well. And the triangle piece doesn't take very long to go out, to, to, to be um, taken out with the mower. And soon run through one of them. Right, I'll do that. And... I'm keeping the mowers on the ground just because it's a little bit faster and I want to try and get this done. We've done so much mowing that I don't really need to, I don't worry about it, um, you know, excessively. And as time goes on, once we start getting some crops going, because obviously we're doing, um, we're going to get the tractor and then we're going to get the upgraded timber runner thing. And then, once I've done that, my next purchase will be the Combine. Uh, but I'm going to want, before I get the Combine, I'm going to want something that will spread lime on the fields. And I'm going to want a spray. Now, both of those are actually reasonably cheap. Right? They don't cost all that much money. Uh, so, we ought to do all right out of picking those up. Um... In particular, there is a uh, fertilizer spinner now that is available in uh, on the Mod Hub. I've got it on... It's actually the one that I used this week in the Black Rock... Uh, the Black Rock Mountain. Um, yeah, Black Rock Mountain. The new time-lapse series. Um, it's the one that I've used on there. It's only like a small rear-mounted one that goes on a three-point linkage. 
Um, and the fantastic thing about it is that it is a fertilizer spinner that takes um, lime at the same time. That's, what I'm, that's the word I'm looking for. Right, uh, I just want to do that a second and start these two up again like that. Uh, yeah, it takes lime at the same... Uh, well, not at the same time. It takes lime and fertilizer. You can choose which one you want to put into it. And that does mean... Wait, is that lowering down? No, it wasn't. Right, control V, there we go. Um, yeah, if, if we can have that one, it means that our fertilizer and lime can be taken care of with the same machine. It's not that much more expensive than the one we're using right now, and it's certainly not like one of the giant trailed ones, which are prohibitively expensive. And we're not going to need to do that much lime. We don't need to put lime on the grass. And we don't need to do weed control on the grass either. So the only thing that we need the lime for is going to be the arable field. And the only arable field we're going to have to start with is going to be that one running up that hill. And yes, we've got a little bit to do before it's actually finished. But by the time we finish it, we should also have money coming in from selling all that timber which will cover the combine, the sprayer, and the lime spreader, or the fertilizer spreader that will also serve as a lime spreader as well. Um, we should, in theory, have enough money to get everything that we need. And then we can start farming that field over there, which means that we can start getting a little bit of grain put aside. Uh, we'll have some straw and... Then the big question is going to be, what do we get? What animal do we go for? Do we go for pigs? Do we go for chickens? Or do we go for cows first? I personally think that chickens would be a good one to go for first. Um, we could actually couple up chickens and cows. Excuse me. Um, reason being... Cows only need straw from the arable side. That's the only thing they need is the straw. We put that in for TMR. We've got silage and hay that we can make from this field right here. So we've got the grass side of it covered for the cows, silage and hay. Um, so all we actually need for the cows is a supply of straw so that they have got uh, the rest of the materials for the TMR. And they've got the... Um, yeah, the TMR and the other, what can we call it? Um, the bedding, the bedding. Uh, so if they've got bedding and they've got the TMR, that's everything that we need to worry about. We don't, you know, then we can just sort of start slowly accumulating our cows. If we get just a few to start with, it'll take a while for them to increase their numbers, but they will do. They will keep working and increasing their numbers. Um... Which means then that we've got uh, time to sort of allow some of those numbers to build up without having to buy all of the cows. Chickens, if we get the pen, once you've got the chicken pen in place and that one is done, you then, you haven't really got to worry about it uh, very much after that. Um, let me just make sure that we've got that. Yeah, that is on 8 metres at the moment. Um, once you've got the chicken pen up and running, once that one is there... You haven't got to worry about too much else with chickens. Uh, they breed very quickly anyway, so you don't have to have massive numbers of chickens in order to make it uh, profitable and make it work. Just bring that back over there a bit. There we go. Right. Um, yeah, you, you don't have to have massive numbers of chickens. What we would want is some sort of thinking um and we, I, I would say that we would want to try and go for a large chicken pen if we can if we can get them if we got the money for it start off with a large chicken pen we do want to get some pallets for the chickens so that we don't have to worry about picking up small um lots of eggs all the time and also eggs we know from the other series that we've been doing eggs can be quite profitable very, very profitable indeed. Although it's, it's definitely not going to be quite as profitable using eggs in the hardcore series because we've got the difficult uh, money setting. However, they're still going to be pretty good. We'll go and have a... I'll check them in just a second. Let's just chop that tree up there a minute. 
I got a nice big pile of logs here. As soon as the tractor is finished down there and we're able to put the other one going. Actually, no, what we'll do is start... Ooh! It didn't actually cut... It didn't, like, we didn't lose the entire tree then by cutting the end off. That makes a pleasant change. I'm used to it doing that, unfortunately. It's not really what we want. Right. Let's take you down. Let me bring that back as well. This is what I really love about the tree harvester is the way that you're able to pile the trees up in a great big heap like this so that it's much, much easier to go and load everything up. Right? It definitely makes a huge difference to loading everything up. Now, let me just have a quick look in here. Eggs at the moment, they're going up and they're two and a half thousand per thousand litres, right? Eggs are massively profitable. So if we can get some chickens going, as soon as we've got our first grain on the it planted, that's definitely going to be a, a good step in the right direction, I think. We want to go there. The big chicken coop is only $40,000. We definitely, definitely want to get a chicken pen. Uh, a large chicken pen at that. We will be able to make a fortune out of eggs. Now, we will stick with our minimum of a full pallet when we come to sell anything. And whether we go for only whole pallets... I don't think we will go for only whole pallets all the time because they don't load sort of sensibly. That's the, the one thing with these pallets is they don't load sensibly. They seem to load a few at a time, and they load the wrong ones. So uh, you, you, you end up putting some eggs into one, and then some eggs into another. It's, well, what it's doing with the wool down there, it's putting a few bits of wool into one of them, and it's putting a few bits of wool into another one, and then a few bits of wool into the next one. And it's not actually just concentrating on one pallet and filling that one on its own. And that's the bit that I don't particularly like. Um, but that's also why I don't think that we should just be, you know, saying, yes, we're definitely only going to sell pallets when they're full, because we could end up with six pallets that are three quarters full, and none of them actually filling all the way to the top until it's sort of like we, we've got all of these full pallets, and then you end up having an. Um, Six pallets almost full, so suddenly all the pallets fill up and you've got no more space for wool or you've got no more space for eggs and you've got uh, really, really poor prices. So you're then forced to sell at a really low price. I don't like being forced to sell at a low price. The whole idea of us being able to sell in bulk and arrange for the person to come up and do the buying is so that we don't have to sell in bulk at low prices. We sell in bulk and we get better prices for it. That is that is the whole point of the um, the selling in bulk thing, is, is you get better prices for it, at least in theory. So we'll... I mean, I'm not going to be selling, like, loads of little bits. We will still say a minimum of a full pallet and mostly full pallets that we'll deal with. But when we do come to do some selling, if I've got six pallets that are all half full, then we'll sell six pallets that are all half full. Or we'll say, a, you know, something like that. So that we've, we've definitely got a full pallet at least. Um, that's, that's kind of the, the idea that I'm... I'm looking at with doing that with the eggs as well as what we do with the wool and it's worked so far with the wool i've been quite pleased with that i will say that we won't do auto loading with eggs the same as we're not going to be doing auto loading with wool anyway um and for the most part if it's only like little bits in the pallets then yeah i won't be um selling them we're not going to sell the little small scraps uh, in, in the pallets. We will try to stick with, so if I've if got like two half pallets and a full pallet, then we'll try to sell the, the, the full pallet as well. Uh, the, the two half pallets as well as the full pallet. I think you understand. I hope, I, I, well, I hope you understand because I think I understand and I'm, I'm sort of, a, I'm, I'm at the point where I'm sort of wondering if I actually understand what I mean myself. So maybe I should stop talking about that. I'm actually really loving this. I'm Genuinely, genuinely loving this. It's absolutely fantastic being able to do this. We can lift that one up. 
Bring it around. Look at these piles of timber that we've got everywhere. And it is definitely faster. It's definitely faster to use this one to chop them down. Because look how quick we cut them. And then they're in a nice pile just left there for us. Which means that then when we come along to load them up, it's going to be a lot faster doing the loading as well. And this actually counts not just for the way that we do our loading with the auto loader. Uh, but it counts for loading in general. Right, if, if you've got it like this, it would load faster because if you're using a... I need to move that out like that and out a bit more. There we go. Right, lower it down like that. If you're using a um, machine with a log grab, any kind of machine with a log grab, whether it's a, a front loader with a big log grab or a tractor with a, a front loader or something like that, um, when you've harvested with a tree harvester, you've got the tree, the whole tree is in a pile. So even if you just pick them up one tree at a time, you've still got the whole lot there is ready and waiting and, and just waiting for you to go and actually load. You don't need to mess around doing, um, like going and picking up one log at a time because you've got them all out in a long line. So this saves, this saves time for both ends of the scale. One for actually doing the cutting, which is faster. It's, it might not be massively faster because of uh, we were getting quite efficient with doing the with doing the chainsawing. Let's be honest, but this is still faster, right? Time you cut the tree down, you let it fall down. We'll do that. We want to switch over to this one like this. I see. All right, we've left a little bit there, and then we'll go back up and we'll switch it over again. Um, yeah, it's it's faster doing the cutting, it's faster doing the loading, it's faster, faster all round. I'm very, very pleased with that machine that we've gone and bought. It seems to be a huge improvement on everything. But it done that again, didn't it? It went all the way up and then the tractor has reversed all the way down across the field. It, it's very weird the way it does that. It reverses across the entire length of the field. And then it switches off and says, you know what, I can't be bothered with this anymore. But it's definitely doing that. I think it's, it is partly to do with that rock, which means that we are going to want to um, dig things up the other side of the stone so that it's no longer part of our field. And I think that will make an improvement. That, that will change the way that we do things. Um, right, well, you keep going. We may as well go back up and we'll do some more of that. But before I do, I just want to have a look at this a second. I want to have a look again. Um, I'm thinking this bit will be our next piece of land to buy. Uh, we'll have a loading area, sort of a staging area there. We've got a steep bank that we're going to have to cut, which means that we're going to have to change the way that we do our felling anyway. And we're going to have to get something to extract the logs from down there, which I was talking about in yesterday's episode. Uh, this one over here, this section here, is $365,000. It's quite expensive. It's a big area of land, admittedly. Uh, it does sort of progress nicely out from the side of ours here. And, I mean, ultimately, I would want to get that one and then that one. So we have those two. Uh, this piece over here would follow on after that. I would say it would be the next natural one to go and purchase if we ended up buying more. But I suspect we'll finish the series with that piece and that piece. I don't think we're going to need to expand out much more than that. So I would say that one next as opposed to that one. But I want your opinions in the comments section. Do you think we should go for the smaller piece of land next? The 167,000 or the 365,000? The big piece or the small piece? Which one do you think we should go for next on our list? And we've got this over here. Now, we've only done still a small area of land. We've done a piece up to there and we've done a piece up this side as well, a little bit out there. So we've still got a big area of trees there plus all of the trees all the way up through there as well. We're going to be putting some animals down over here, and we're going to put some animals down up here. I was thinking I would put chickens down over here, and we'll put more sheep as well when we get a bigger sheep pen. And then I was going to put cows up here. Although, with the sheds and stuff that we've got, I know I was going to use this bit up here as kind of a, a staging area for... Um, for doing the logs and that, but I am thinking that up near there might be a pretty good place to put the cows. So the cows go right up the top end, 
And at the top of the hill, because keeping the animals separate does seem to work out a little bit better for um, like gameplay purposes. Um, if we were to put the keep the pigs in this area here, sheep and chickens down here, and then cows out over here. If we go to the land, right, we, we'd, so we'd be able to buy that. Um, we could put cows maybe out over that. So Well, we could put the cows over there, so they're not that far away from the pigs. Uh, the, sh the barn, the shed, that sort of runs along that side of it, which is why I was thinking the cows over here, because it would sort of be a natural run out that end to feed the cows. And then you've got storage for bales in here anyway, for straw and stuff like that. Um, I think that could work. I do. I think that could work fairly well. But we'll we'll sort of we'll wait and we'll, we'll see how things progress. Uh, right now, we'll let you carry on there and we're going to go back up here we're able to teleport because that's hired help down there that's not actually us and all the time that we've been sort of looking at that we've actually been up here all right this is a whole space-time continuum thing don't worry about it dr strange will be able to explain a lot more i'm sure i think it's dr strange isn't it I'm not very up on my avengers but i'm pretty sure he's the dude that deals with um the whole space-time continuum thing isn't he something like that I'm, I'm sure one of them has something to do with the space-time continuum. Anyway, let's continue on. I'm still waiting to get one of those weird trees. If I can get one of those weird trees, it'd be interesting to find out how the harvester deals with it. What happens? Is it going to just completely crash the game? Or is it going to just, like, drop the tree? Or is it not going to harvest it at all? Or what? What is going to happen when the tree harvester fastens on to one of those weird trees that we've dealt with a few times already? Let's bring you... You want to bring that back towards me, I suppose. Like that, maybe. There we go. Right. Chop you off like that. And then we'll back down here so we've got that on roughly the same heap. Like that. And chop that one up. It's the tall trees that are the weird ones. So there's a couple of tall trees right there. We'll see if one of those is going to be weird. And uh, it might be because we have got... Like, I have noticed that the more of these tall trees we cut down, the less issues we have with lag spots. And I think that's sort of a way that we can determine whether or not there is one of the trees nearby is when we have a lag spot. And there is a slight lag spot up here on this side. So I'm wondering if one of these trees is actually the root cause of that. It might be. It might not be. There's there's no real way of knowing until we actually get our tender teeth into one. Right. Well, I don't think that is one. And I wasn't actually supposed to fell it like that. Because I think I've just crushed my own cab. I'll chop that. It might be that the weird tree actually functions properly in the tree harvester. Because it will treat it like it will anything else in the game, won't it? So it might be that the weird ones will actually function properly with the harvester, but when we get them over, and they'll load onto the autoloader as well, because we've trimmed all the branches off, but when we get them over to the sawmill, that's when you end up not getting any money for it, because we do know that you don't get money for the weird ones. Um, that's one thing that we have already figured out, is that we, well... We don't get money for them. Ooh, is that... Is that a weird one or is that just... No, I don't think it is. Uh, it's... Right, well, no, it's, it's sitting above the ground. When the, well, but it's when you cut the tree. It's the way you cut the tree that then half of it goes into the ground or when you cut the tree down. So that question is still to be answered i think i don't think that is going to be answered in today's episode because i have actually run out of time for today's episode so in next weeks we will be finishing that mowing down there we've got a little bit more oops bring it back a bit uh we've got a little bit more uh mowing to do there and then we can start doing our raking get a couple rounds around the outside done like we normally do go and take care of the bales around the outside edge and then once we've done that bit we'll be looking at uh, raking up the rest of the field and 
bailing everything all at once. So the raking, that will be able to carry on with the hired help. It's only the bailing that we've got to manually do ourselves. So we'll be able to do a fair bit more work with our tree harvester here, which I'm quite pleased with. I like the fact that we can do a bit more work with the tree harvester. You know what? I'm going to turn that round. Bring you up like that. And that'll be there ready so that we can drag those down towards the pile of logs that we've got down here. Be a little bit better, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, we, we've run out of time for today, so we'll stop that one right now. Um, so, yes, if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.